Asset management has become extremely complicated. According to one study, there are 16 different layers of intermediation involved. And of course, each one adds to the cost. But it needn't be like that. This new book, What They Do With Your Money, claims we need to reinvent the pensions industry. It also suggests we look to the past for inspiration, and in particular to two Scottish clergymen. Robert Wallace and Alexander Webster set up the world's first pension fund in 1743 for the dependents and widows of clergymen. As David Pitt Watson, one of the book's authors, explains, it was a system built on absolute integrity. This is a fund. It started by two Scottish ministers for the widows of Scottish ministers. Um, and it's a pension fund for them that will look after them until they die if the, if the, if the, if the breadwinner has died. Um, and it does include breakthroughs in statistics from the 1740s and information systems. But of course, the reason that it was possible in the 1740s by two Scottish ministers for the widows of Scottish ministers was they were trustworthy. They were never going to start taking hidden fees so that they could live a nice lifestyle. They were only going to do what was best for their clients, which was other ministers and the widows and, and orphans. Um, of those ministers. And so it's that trustworthiness, it's that social underpinning that allows the financial institutions to work quite as much as it is all those clever techniques that we're teaching people. For David Pitt Watson, the key to restoring trust in asset management is for financiers to align their interests much more closely with those of consumers. Too often, he says, financial incentives force them into making moral compromises. I would really worry for fund managers and indeed for companies that we've got into this seeing what is it that you do year to year in the market value of the shares that you're invested in as being the best way of measuring whether you're doing well or not. Um, if you decide that you're going to do that, you encourage all sorts of behaviours that I don't think are too clever. So. Uh, the overtrading of shares, for example, rather than the, the patient uh, ownership of shares. The creation of lots and lots of different funds, because, look, if you've got one fund that just is at the average, wouldn't you be much better to have two where 50 of your money, 50 percent of your money was outperforming and you took a bonus, and 50 percent of your money was underperforming, but you didn't lose anything as a result. So if you don't think about what the fund manager, or indeed the chief executive, is doing as being a task that is a, a long-term task, you'll get short-term behaviour, and that indeed is what you see, and that short-term behaviour hits you because the fees are higher, people are trying to get those fees, but it also hits you because we're not uh, investing in companies well. In the third and final video in this series, we'll be looking at the need for transparency in asset management. Clarity for consumers as to what they're paying, and how much value they're receiving in return. Goodbye. It's very important for financial advisors, if they want business, to establish trust. One way of doing that is to educate investors. Video is a great way of establishing trust. It gives us great pleasure to see our clients benefiting from these videos. Ultimately, this is a team effort. Together, we're trying to change the way the world invests.